the forgiver. We like stories of betrayal and revenge. We like watching films, for instance, where the hero gets messed with, gets unfairly ravaged, betrayed, left for dead, beat up, made fun of, harpooned, buried, scandalized. Treated unfairly to a maximal degree, where all of his friends and family move to take him out, and even the girl that he loves is in on it. And just when you think he couldn't possibly survive, somehow, some way, he comes back and enacts epic levels of revenge, picking up the sword of his vindication and stabbing through the black hole of Satan's heart. And as we watch him take revenge in our minds, we are there with him in movie seats, stuffing our face with popcorn and getting the juice of his retribution to surge through our own little human veins. Maybe it's a boss you hate, or a best friend who lets you down. Perhaps even family tried gossiping you into an early grave. But whatever it is, we've all been betrayed. Therefore, movies of vindication and retribution and revenge loom large in the zeitgeist. Rambo is the one that comes to mind first. Rambo, John Rambo. Anything by Charles Bronson, Clint Eastwood, and his character called Dirty Harry. And if it's not over-the-top violence one has to overcome, then it's the violence of the world which typically expresses itself through an ambivalence of your en entire existence. Most people don't have a town chasing them with pitchforks. Most people just get ignored to death. We also love the story of the character down on his luck, but who manages to overcome it all and achieve massive fame and fortune and greatness in the face of those who never believed in him or lost faith. I'm thinking of Rocky. We plug our own lives into these filmic ones dancing through light and celluloid and claim through fantasy of identification some vengeance for our own lifetimes of betrayal. It's found us all in some way or another. The Forgiver, though, is a movie I doubt we will see anytime soon. The story of a man betrayed in every single way possible, left for dead by family and friends, but somehow manages to survive and then wanders back into town and just forgives everybody. The forgiver. The look in their eyes going from terror to confusion. The forgiver. He'll shock you with a tidal wave of letting go. That's what the movie poster should say. A tidal wave of letting go, the forgiver. I don't think, though, this flick would get anyone in those movie seats, no matter how good the poster was, stuffing their face with popcorn and chocolate. Because forgiving is hard, and it's not any fun, really. The idea of handing over the vindication of however we've been betrayed to God, whose ways we don't understand, and whose reward system seems kooky, if not broken. At least in terms of how we measure rewards with our tiny human minds money, fame, and famous friends, and superficial parties, and endless platforms for attention and adulation. According to those metrics, there seems to be not much that's fair about life, or seemingly no direct connection to morality and rewards at all. And so, to surrender vindication, to leave it to the Lord as it were, really is a leap of faith. To let go is hard, and there will never be a blockbuster called The Forgiver, and probably not a wacky independent film about it either. But if we look at the actual awards of this life, the deeper ones, and how important the gifts of forgiveness actually are to opening those gifts up to us on a spiritual level, forgiveness is more Rambo-like than what first meets the eye, because forgiveness sets you free. And to find out why, we just need to backwards engineer betrayal and what it does to our minds. It locks us in a station of repetitive thought full of clouds of anger and resentment. It holds us hostage to the past where we retell the stories of the history of our wrongs to ourselves or anyone who will listen. It makes us root our lives from a place of memory rather than inspiration. And it cuts us off from realizing our vision. The devil wants you mad and full of rage, and he wants you to stay that way. In our day, we have learned just how valuable attention really is. And so for most, the real damage of betrayal comes in its takeover of our attention. 
and the losses from betrayal are stacked mostly from the focus that we tend to give it because when we focus on the wrongs, that's just time draining from our lives, not focused on our dreams, not focused on building something new, not focused on what we want to become, not focused on what we can give. That's the real ravages of betrayal and the subsequent cage of resentment it locks us inside of. So how do we become the forgiver in the blockbuster of our life? How do we fill our blazing guns with bullets of peace, love, and understanding? How do we wander bloody and bandaged back into town and simply forgive everyone who left us for dead? How do we become the forgiver? Part of how we do it is just through the realization of the facts of it that holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the, atten with the intention of throwing it at someone else. You're still the one who gets burned. And as great as John Rambo is, he will never tell you the, this basic fact. When we turn over vindication to the Lord, we have faith that we can let go of the resentment. And that, and that ultimately, the books of betrayal will be made right. The economy of the spirit will get squared away, probably in ways that we won't be able to see or understand. But that's where faith comes in. Prayer is powerful and really the ultimate force in this battle. To surrender, to turn it over, to ask for help in removing the blockades of rage. But another trick that works for me, especially in the realm of intrusive thinking, which is another huge aspect of betrayal, the anger that rises from it is famous. And that's the Ho'oponopono prayer, the Hawaiian mantra of responsibility and forgiveness. It may be easy to realize forgiveness will set us free because nobody wants to walk around with hot coals of rage in their hands, but to enact forgiveness is another thing altogether. To really let it all go, to really be the forgiver. Pono Pono lets you fight fire with fire, or maybe fire with water. It's, it calls in the firemen of the mind. It sets spiritual hoses ablaze, and powerful ones at that. Taking full responsibility of everything in our field of consciousness. Taking responsibility of every event in our lives and everyone who has played any kind of part in our soul's journey, realizing that we in some way have called these events into our lives. And the people who cast them into that role and the people who we cast into that role to bring about something necessary in our soul's evolution to humble us, I guess, to deflate our egos or whatever the case may be, this mantra along with prayer gives us an actionable resource when we languish in the memory of a world weaponized against us. The mantra is simple. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Rambo could have just as easily hidden in a forest, sat under a tree, and repeated those phrases in his mind, leveraging them on everyone in that podunk town that tried to do him in. And had he done it long and hard enough, he could have dismantled that situation that way because he would have freed his consciousness from the reality of it. He could have ended it by seeing through the illusion of it all, through the power of forgiveness. However, no one wants to see that movie. Rambo freeing his mind from resentment and working on some kind of love-filled vision the mental real estate he freed to see it through, that movie would be boring. But our lives are more complicated than the movies. We can't just pick up guns and go ham on legions of backstabbers. In real life, we have to forgive in order to move on. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Along with prayer, I replace resentment's repetition with those phrases often and hold the targets of resentment in, in my mind as I do it. I let it wash over them and the situation and it works. How do we say those phrases in our minds towards the targets of our rage? We frame it this way. I love you for helping my soul's evolution. I'm sorry for casting you as the villain in my story. 
please forgive me for doing that and thank you for doing that. I realize that that will seem like a stretch when you'd rather come in with guns blazing, but the benefits of assuming total responsibility for everything in your field of consciousness or life is liberty from the helpless identity of the victim. And even though you may have been victimized, you do have the power to free yourself from that penalty box, the cage of anger that locks us in the past. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. That's the real flamethrower. That's Neo in the Matrix stopping the bullets mid-flight, kicking them out of the sky and watching them fall to the ground.